preganglionic and postganglionic brachial plexus injury. When you have an injury to the brachial plexus, you got to determine if that injury is a preganglionic or postganglionic injury. If we take the preganglionic injury, it is an avulsion proximal to the dorsal root ganglia. It involves the central nervous system. It is a root avulsion. It has no potential for recovery and it has a bad prognosis. So what do you find in preganglionic brachial plexus injury? You will find Horner's syndrome due to disruption of the sympathetic chain, C8T1. What is Horner's syndrome? It is dosis, meiosis, inhydrosis, and inophthalmos. If a patient with a brachial plexus injury has Horner's syndrome, that's a bad prognosis. We also can find medial winging of the scapula due to loss of the serratus anterior muscle and involvement of the long thoracic nerve. That suggests preganglionic injury. The long thoracic nerve arises from C5, C6, and C7. The inferior border goes medially. You will also have rhomboid paralysis due to involvement of the dorsal scapular nerve. You will also have supraspinatus and the infraspinatus weakness due to suprascapular nerve involvement. So always look for the preclavicular nerve root involvement such as scapular winging, rhomboid paralysis, and cuff dysfunction. The patient also will have filial arm. There will be motor deficit and the sensory is intact. Why? Because the sensory neurons are in the dorsal root ganglia. The sensation passed to the dorsal root ganglia is uninterrupted. The EMG will show loss of innervation to the cervical paraspinals. And this is very good test. When you have loss of innervation of the cervical paraspinals, then this is a root problem and not a brachial plexus problem. What do you see in postganglionic brachial plexus injury? The postganglionic involves the peripheral nervous system that have the ability to recover and regenerate. That has a better prognosis than the preganglionic. The patient will have sensory deficit and motor deficit because the injury is distal to the dorsal root ganglia, so it will affect the sensation. The postganglionic is usually postclavicular nerve involvement. An example of that is stinger or herbs obstetric palsy. The EMG will show innervation to the cervical paraspinals and you will have an abnormal histamine test. So what is Herb's palsy? Herb's palsy is an injury to the upper trunk, C5, C6, with weakness of the deltoid, the cuff, the elbow flexors, and the wrist extensors. The arm will be abducted, internally rotated at the shoulder, and the forearm will be pronated, and the elbow will be extended, and it is called waiter's tip. This is the most common obstetric brachial plexus injury. It is a traction injury, and it carries the best prognosis, and you got to follow the biceps function to monitor the recovery of the condition. 90% recovery, early return of biceps function by three months carries a favorable outcome. The clumpy palsy is claw hand and lower trunk lesion, C8T1. It is rare. It's probably preganglionic injury associated with Horner's syndrome and it carries a poor prognosis.
there'll be weakness of the wrist flexors and all small muscles of the hand, the intrinsics. It presents itself as a claw hand. The total plexus injury from C5 to T1 carries the worst prognosis. The arm is completely flaccid. It involves motor and sensory. Treatment of brachial plexus injuries. Conservative treatment, observation, physiotherapy. If there is no improvement by three months, especially in the biceps, then suspect nerve avulsion of the brachial plexus and think about surgical options. Because it's root avulsion, you don't expect recovery. The surgical options are multiple, but usually it is a microsurgery nerve grafting for post-ganglionic injury or nerve transfer or neurotization for pre-ganglionic injury. You're going to use fascicles from the ulnar and median nerve and will transfer it to the biceps and brachialis branches of the musculocutaneous nerve. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.